So let's say welcome to John. And uh, thank you. Thank you everybody and thanks for coming out tonight. Um, it's, it's, it's already quite late, isn't it? I mean, not for me, but you know, it's great that you're out. We were out till, till 11.15. Now, I've been a practitioner, a natural health practitioner, and a sharp aim, dealing with patients since 1992. And even before that, I had an interest in health. I worked in a health store, worked as a nurse. Um, and eventually, in the early 90s, I decided to do a course on homeopathy here in Birmingham at the Homeopathy College, uh, which was a four-year course. And uh, I qualified in homeopathy. Always had a very, very keen interest in natural health. Uh, moved to Finnhorn in, in Scotland. Anybody heard of Finnhorn? Okay. Uh, lived there for about 10 years and uh, ran a practice up there. And um, I, I tried just about every therapy that was going. Not that there was anything drastically wrong, but just to, because I'm keen and I want to try everything. Um, and I want, to get the, I want to get all my patients well, or at least give them the tools so they can get well. So it was about 10 years ago that I decided to try something that I knew about, but I'd never actually put it into practice, and that's alkalizing. I worked out, I read all the little books that were available there, not many, it's still quite a new subject, and I did it. So I, I got all these books together, worked out what's alkaline in terms of food and what isn't, and actually got myself into an alkaline state. And you can sort of test yourself uh, with, these, with these little test strips. Oops. The, the test strips, I'm going to pass around so that you can test yourselves uh, in about an hour's time. So if, you, if you've got a drink or something to eat, do it now. Have something to eat and drink now. And give yourself at least half an hour with no food or drink or chewing or anything because that changes the results that we're going to do to get get the saliva. So if you want a genuine test, you need to sort of like, in, in a few minutes, stop drinking and eating. Uh, and, then, and then we'll do the test before the break in about an hour's time and we'll see what the results come in in life. Um, so, going back 10 years, mid 40s, mid to late 40s, I was thinking I need to get my football career back on track. Um, I did the same exercise every, every football, before every game, these special stretching exercises. And he was getting a bit stiff, and I thought, this is not good. I don't know if any of you, anybody plays soccer here. No. All right, got it. Yeah, cool. Uh, you're going you're gonna to love my teammate. She plays for England. Uh, so I played on long Sophie Bradley, who's the fullback for England. I mean, she's, she's played for our team on a Friday night. Now, um, so I'm beating I'm well I'm Williams football, it's great. Now, um, I, yeah, I, I, I had another problem, which was a shoulder injury. So I've got this, I can only describe it as like a frozen shoulder. I can move to about the, and um, it started getting really painful. So I thought, okay, that went on for two years and it wasn't getting any better. So uh, also, I put on two stone, this was 10 years ago, mid 40s. Any, anybody put on any weight in the mid 40s? Mm. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Um, tend to put on weight in the mid-40s, and, and the other thing is, anybody's eyes sort of going as they get into mid-40s. Okay. Why is that? Do you know? Why, why, why do people start needing specs when they get into the mid-40s? Anybody know? It's, it's, not, it's, it's even simpler than that. Then you said the length becomes less flexible and rounded you bit. Well, yeah, basically, it's not that the lens becomes less flexible so much as the, the eyes get bigger and then the, the muscular system doesn't work and you can't cope anymore. So you, you get these big eyes. You just get bigger as we get older. So it's bad news from 40, early 40s onwards. You kind of like thinking the muscles just cannot do it. So um, just, just as an aside, um, I've, I've been wearing these. <laughs> I mean, you've seen these, yeah. they're, they're pinhole, yeah. 
No, it's just that they're not actually specs. But you, 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 anybody, anybody want to try them? Yeah? Okay, try them. And, and sort of like pass them around if anyone wants to have a go with them. So that you, you kind of look at so you I can't see that anymore. Then you put those things on. They're all just holes. You know, you just you think, oh my god, I can see it. And it's exercising the eye. So gradually, my eyes have got better over the years. And um, with a few other things like alkalizing as well. So going back 10 years, frozen shoulder, putting on like two stone, my football career going down here, was stretching difficult, I decided to alkalize, I knew, I knew I knew all about it, I just thought, am I actually going to do it? Am I really going to give up my little treats and the And actually, I spent the last 10 years developing a whole set of new treats that are actually totally healthy. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not missing out on stuff now. It was just a period of transition of like trying to work out what we can do, because this was the early days of alkalizing. Anyway, I alkalized just to see what would happen. And um, day one, I got on the scales and I thought, oh, that's not bad, I lost a pound. Day two, I lost another pound. Day three, I lost another pound. So you imagine, you know, two stone overweight, so that's 28 pounds. 20, at the end of the month, I was back to my... 19 year old self. I was thinking, God, you know, this is amazing. Inadvertently, I went to scratch my head, and I, it, it, my arm came back to normal. It was like, oh my God, okay, this is good. And then I did the stretching exercises, playing football, and it went back to normal, like it was when I was 19, 20 years of age, and I thought, this is amazing. So I started to introduce it into my practice. And well, the other thing is that I lost the weight and it never came back. So it, it was, you know, I just carried on alkalizing and it never came back. Um, the, the, the other thing, there's so many things it affects. It is just every part of your being that it affects. And as we get into the talk, I'll explain it's not just the physical that it affects, but if you follow kind of the, the few simple ideas that I'm going to share with you, and you get into it a little bit, and you do a little bit of exercise, eat the alkaline diet, the healthy diet, the living foods diet, go quite raw, and, but not totally raw if you don't want to. You know, it's quite an interesting diet. Um, if you do all of that, you actually get into a state of euphoria. So it's not just the physical. And I had a phone call just yesterday where this guy gets on the phone and says, uh, John, um, they want a book on the retreat. Look at living foods, it's coming up. This is all stuff. Look at yogurt, it's coming up. 
Walking and typing, yoga into Google. Walking and typing alkaline health or alkaline diet or alkalizing into Google is going like this. So it's where things are kind of heading. Um, and, and I was quite surprised to see that. But I was even more surprised when I... Um, somebody sent me a link to a video of President Clinton. Um, and this is just, I'm going to show you a one minute video of President Clinton. Uh, I, I never thought I'd see somebody who's so mainstream kind of doing interesting things. So um, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can quickly show you this. Uh, okay.
he came off his tablets. He wanted to lose weight as well, lost the weight, came off his tablets. Um, now, I'm not saying you should come off your tablets, I'm saying you should monitor yourself and go to the doctor. Whoever put you on the tablets, they're the person that needs to get you off them. But, you know, that's what he did when he was exposed to the doctor and said, look, you know, I want to try reducing it, and he got off his tablets. A uh, 50 year old businessman, he was heading for a heart, heart attack, um, his ankles started swelling up big time, and um, the doctor said, look, you've you got a big heart. He, he just changed his lifestyle and did it. 72 year old, overweight, prostate problems, the prostate problems started to occur. So it's, it's not just the overweight. And, and here's, the, here's what we're dealing with here, right now. This, this is the, the difference between what I'm going to be talking about and a lot of other, other kind of ways of healing. Um, I did a course in homeopathy and it was four years. And, you know, it was a great course, but the philosophy was carry on more or less what you're doing and we're going to give you the remedies to get, try and get you well. Now you go and see a doctor. So a friend of mine said, oh, I've got inflammation, you know, he did something, he got big inflammation from in his left foot, went to the doctor and took a shed load of anti-inflammatories, and, um, you know, the pain went, and then, and then he kind of, like, kept taking these, these anti-inflammatories, and then he came off them, and then the pain was there. And in the, in the end, after a long period of time on these anti-inflammatories, his, his foot kind of got better, slightly better, but, but it's all about hiding the symptoms uh, and giving drugs and trying to fix the problem. At no point did the doctor say to him, you know what, all this drinking that you're doing is giving you a shed load of uric acid and you know, that's part of the problem. Um, so, you know, the doctors don't really get you to change your diet in any substantial way. Um, and it's, you know, I went to see an acupuncture. I'm not saying all acupuncturists lies, because some brilliant acupuncturists, but they, they do vary. So I went to see an acupuncturist who basically stuck all the needles in, never really questioned me about my diet or my lifestyle, and just sort of said, oh yeah, what's the problem? Okay, did, did, you know, and it was like that. Now, I'm not, not, not just one, that, you know, but I'm not saying there's a whole shed load of brilliant therapists out there that take everything into account. But the difference is, in my practice, observing the patients, the difference is the people that make the biggest progress in the shortest amount of time are the people that make the lifestyle change. If you make the lifestyle change, you're going to see results very, very quickly, incredibly quickly, on every level. So it's that, that, that it's, it's the people of them. Now, a friend of mine who runs the biggest homeopathy college in London said, John, you know, you, you want to get a practitioner course off again? They have I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, well, good luck, because people just don't want to change. You know, um, they just don't want to make a change. You, you know, how, how are you going to get people to change their lifestyle? <clears throat> and I said, well, you know, that's my job. I get people to change their lifestyle. Um, and make it enjoyable and interesting. And when you get, you know, in a very short space of time, when you start getting results, you're kind of motivated to carry on. Um, or at least then keeping up your sleeve, ready to sort of bring it out when you need it, when you feel a bit, you know, all things are going down a little bit. So, you know, I'm up for the challenge of getting people to actually change their lifestyle because of the results that you get. Um, okay. Obesity, epidemic causing 40,000 deaths, at least heart disease, stroke, diabetes. Um, um, the body mass index is 25. So you can type into Google body mass BMI and you can come to the chart and you can work out where you are with it. Um, but, uh, I've, got, I've got the chart further on. But um, if you go from 22 to 25, you have five times greater risk of diabetes. A small change. Those few pounds do actually make a difference to your health. So it's, it's a great motivator you know, to, to try and get to what you consider is your optimum weight from a health perspective. Um, something very interesting has happened in, in the UK. So this is research from the Department of Health 2005. Height, we've increased by 
three centimetres, one and a half inches in this country between um, uh, 1993 and 2004. Um, oh no, this is national size, it's 1951 to 2004. We've increased, we've one and, a, one and a half inches, three centimetres taller, busts, one and a half inches. Remember as well. Remember as well. Yeah, busts, one and a half inches. Three centimetres. <laughs> Hips, three centimetres. Uh, one arm inches. Waist, 16 centimetres. Six and a half inches. Now, it's the waist. As, you get, as, you, as we go through this presentation, you'll realise it's the waist that we're all the problems still on. So, um, Rather than doing the BMI now, I just kind of measure uh, patients around the hips and around the waist and work out the proportion between them. And for women it should be 0.8, the waist should be smaller than the hips. In, if you want to get an optimum kind of, get down to your optimum sort of size. For men, it's 0.95, 0.95, it's more or less straight down. But there is a little, it should be a little bit slimmer on your, on your waist than you are on your, your hips. So it's 0.95 for men, 0.8 for women. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. no? okay. um, what are the main health issues? Obesity is not like other, you've got cancer, heart disease. I, I do put iatrogenic in there, which is all the problems caused by the doctors and, and surgery, <laughs> unnecessary um, drugs. Uh, bad advice, um, etc., etc. You know, it's, it's a catastrophe that's happening out there. Um, obesity is right up there, diabetes, MS, etc. It's right up there, it's causing all sorts of problems. That's, that's the body that's in there. So you can get this off the internet. Um, you can't see the colour scheme, but that's sort of pink, obese. Uh, you work out your weight, um, that's in, in pounds uh, or kilograms. Then you work out your height. And you work out what you are, so I'm, you know, I'm five foot seven here, and weigh, um, what is my weight? In pounds, oh, I don't know. Uh, 140, 150, 150. So 150 by, da 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 da. Oh, normal. Is that 10 stone 10? Yeah, approximately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, Oh, you can do it in yellow. Yeah, you've got, you've got, you've got, if you type the stuff in, you can, you can do it in every possible type of different shades of colour and different ways of doing it. So just type it in Google and you can work it out. And it'll tell you whether you're normal or obese or, you know, or whatever. Um, now, percentage fat. I've got these super scales. When, when you come on one of our retreats, if, you know, if you come on one of them, we get everybody to sort of go, just if optionally, we really can have all these little tests, and one of them is percentage body fat but at the beginning of the retreat and at the end you can sort of see it changing so uh, it's quite exciting stuff um, so uh, depending on age percentage healthy fat um, but I, I would, even this this is like the government fat right um, so if you hear it should be 29 to 28 um, for women but um, you know that's your age and that's the percentage fat but um, you know, I find that when you albinize, you can't do matter what age you are, you kind of zoom back up to here. Yeah? It, it kind of, so I'm, I'm, I'm questioning these stats produced by the government. So, but muscle is heavier than that, so the BMI is not the be all and end all, because if you take the BMI, that's literally just how much do you weigh. It suddenly can be incredibly heavy because they've turned everything into muscle. And so he skews the BMI and he says, oh, they're obese. And you look at them, you think there's no way they're obese. So the BMI, if you're very muscular, can give you the wrong result. You can think, oh my God, I'm obese. But you're not at all because you're just really muscular. So don't take it like gospel. You're not obese. You know, things do just to measure the waist. All you need is a simple tape measure. And that, that's it. That's all you need. And there's the ratio. 8 .0 .8 and 0.95 for men. So, um, okay, where did these fat cells come from now? We've got a whole load of fat cells. Where did they come from? <coughs> when, when did they arrive? 
Well, age really. <laughs> yeah, you've got some fat as a baby, yeah. And then you kind of like get to a certain point where you get a new set, a whole brand new set of fat cells. What age is that? Puberty. Puberty. Who said that? Puberty. So puberty, you get dished out a whole set of new fat cells. Um, and then, that's it. You're allocating a certain number, a few million, a few billion fat cells, and you're walking around with the fat cells, and uh, that's it. Um, now, when you put on weight, you're not actually putting on loads of new fat cells. It's the fat cells getting bigger and swelling up. And they, can, they can get to six times the original size. So they're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger if you're getting fatter, you know. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then Pardon? I let it go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so puberty, you get a whole layer of fat cells. Now, when do you get a new set of fat cells? This is more for women than it is for men. You get a brand new set, when? Not in change. Who said pregnant? Pregnant. Pregnant, you get a brand new set. On top of the other one. Yeah. You get a whole load of new, new fat cells. Um, so that's when, you know, a lot of people come to you and say, well, I'm, you know, I've got pregnant and I can't, I can't get back to where I was, you know, and get to alkalize. Um, so I put some form into a puberty and that's your designated lot. When you put it on weight, you're filling in existing fat cells. You've got 35 billion fat cells on average if you're a woman. We've got only got 26. Um, um, the average is 27% fat for men, right. women, and 15% for men. So don't compare yourself, if you're a man, don't compare yourself with your wife in terms of fat. You know, because, you know, don't tell her she should be the same as you, because you're going to upset her because she's never going to be the same as you. You know, you're the men are a lot lower, that percentage wise. Um, but you do need fat, it's not all bad. You know, bad, you need it for ovulation, for example. You know, women get too skinny, they stop ovulating. Um, it's, it's energy storage, it's insulation, it's, um, it can protect your vital organs, um, it, it can produce hormones. But when it, when it starts filling up around the waist, it, it can get very tricky, very tricky, um, health wise. So it's got a lot of goods, you, you do need some fat, it is good to have some fat, you need it. Um, but when it starts getting too much on, on the central area, that's when the problems start. So, the other good thing is that the fat will store toxins. And believe it or not, the, the patients that have the highest risk, in my, in my experience, of getting sort of quite ill quickly are the ones who've got a terrible lifestyle and they're skinny. Because the thing about having weight is you can dump everything in the fat. The body knows, it thinks, oh right, okay, but this is this is not this is a toxin. Um, what we're gonna do with it, can I get it out through the kidney? Oh no, I don't want to risk that, because the body's very intelligent. It thinks let's dump it in the fat, and it dumps it all in the fat. So it's actually got a really good use. And as as the acid builds up in you, it thinks I'm gonna try and get all this out. But if you're not drinking loads of water and you're not flushing out all this acid, he thinks, you know what, I don't want to risk wrecking the kidneys and you know, with the strong acid in the bowels. Let's just dump it in the fat. So it dumps all the acid in the fat as well. Um, and so another reason why, when you alkalize, it thinks, ah, because it's very intelligent, it thinks there's so much water coming through, it's all alkaline, it's streaming through. You know what, I'm going to release some of this fat with all this toxic acid in it. It's going to get washed away. And it does it. It's exactly what it does. It, it melts the belly fat. So, let's go on to alkalizing. Um, you've got 0 to 14. Um, the, the closer you get to 0, the more acid it is, whatever it is you're testing. The more it goes towards 14, the more alkaline it is. So, and 7 is neutral. So, 7 and above is more alkaline, and 7 or below is acidic. And when you stop putting in lovely alkaline things like salt, you know, good quality Himalayan salt, 
fruits and vegetables, not, not all fruits, I'm going to tell you what's, what, what, what's acidic and what isn't. Wheat grass and living foods, alkalizing drops, these, these things. When you, when you put all those in the body, it's actually crediting you with alkaline reserves. Because you need alkaline reserves, and I'll explain why in a moment. And as you put in the beer, the wine, the, 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 the junk food, the coffees, the coca colas and all the other things I'm going to list for you in a moment, is the acidic foods. And as you put all of those in, then basically you, 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 you kind of like go into your overdraft. You're spending, uh, you're putting too much acid in, it's taking energy away from you. So there's a magic number here, 7.365. That is the, your blood is actually alkaline, it's 7.365. And you'll be able to remember that, won't you? Because there's seven days in a week and 365 days in a year. Okay? So, so your blood is 7.365. Now, what happens when it changes? So if, if your pH changes, it becomes slightly more acidic, you know, like, you know, like drops to 7.3 or 7.2, what happens? Yeah, it's worse than that, to be honest. That, that, that sounds like you've got a little bit of uh, opportunity to correct things before you snuff it. <laughs> yeah. this, this, if your pH, if the pH of your blood goes down, you're dead within a few hours. Okay? It's just like your temperature. And the body maintains a very, it's like getting you and dumping you into a freezing cold tub of freezing cold water or river. Right, you've got, you got like an hour, two hours, three hours. It's exactly the same with the pH of your blood. Now, what the body does is, you know, you're not going to get, you know, first of all, you're not going to jump into a freezing cold river. You're going to, and you're going to keep yourself warm and all the rest of it. But, but, um, the body will always try and maintain your temperature around the correct temperature, and it does exactly the same with the pH of your, your blood, 7.365. If, if you put a load of acid into the body, into the bloodstream, it thinks, oh my god, it's homeostatic, it thinks, oh my god, it's, it's going acidic, okay, and it's got all these alkaline reserves in your energy bank that are being released. It releases like little bits of sodium bicarb into the blood to get it back up to 7.365. And it will not let you down. It will not let you die. It's that good. Okay, so it's not going to let you die. It will keep it at 7.365. Now, if you're in your overdraft and your credits are down, how does it do it? How does it keep you alive? Anybody know? It, takes, it thinks, right, okay, let's take, you know, we're running out of reserves, we're running very low, um, we don't want this person to die, you know, your little energy system that's buzzing away in there, thinks, let's get the calcium out of the bones now. And it takes calcium, a little bit of calcium out of the bones and dumps it, and calcium is a great alkalizer. So we get it back to 7.365. Hence, we've got an epidemic of osteoporosis. And when you start alkalizing, it doesn't need to take any calcium out of your bones, it leaves your bones alone because you've got plenty of alkaline reserves built up from the food and lovely things that you're doing to help yourself. The same is true with the muscular system, it becomes weaker because it takes the magnesium out, because that's a great alkalizer as well, and the potassium, um, and the salt, the, the um, sodium as well, it's, it takes it all out, these are great alkalizers, the four great alkalizers. Um, these minerals are the four amazing alkalizers, and um, you know that, that it gets you back into an alkaline state. Um, now, so our job is to get not not get into a drastic situation where it's thinking, you know what, I'm out of reserves. I'm going to do something drastic like wreck the, the muscular or the bone system. I'm going to, I'm just going to, you know, I want, I want to, I want to get everybody topped up with all their alkaline reserves, um, so they're never going to run out. Does that make sense? So, we're going to do the test. Um, so, it's in, it's in a couple of stages. What, what, what we'll do is um, send this around. Um, and, uh, send that one around. 
<laughs> just, just take three strips about an inch and a half long, three of them, and hold on to them. Don't, don't sort of start licking them. Yeah. Okay, so that, if you just pull them out and tear off three strips, um, we've got we've got more here. Um, Now these test strips come, come with a chart and it says 5.5, which is acidic, then it gets, as it gets progressively dark it becomes more alkaline. So if it's dark, it's alkaline. If it, if it stays light when we test you, then that means it's, uh, you know, it is acidic. So wait, wait till everybody's got the, we'll do it all together, the, the, the little test. Um, Okay, so how do you put on fat? One of the big problems is insulin resistance. Okay, so what is it? Um, the way that the body works, and this is why sugar is so fattening, um, the way that the body works and carbs are so fattening, um, if you eat too much all the wrong things, like um, two high glycemic foods like carbs and sugar and stuff like that, you get high levels of blood sugar. When when the blood is flooded with blood sugar, um, just just just, just a quick question: um, How much? How many, how many pints of blood have you got in your body? How many? Eight. You said that. Eight. Eight. Eight more. Eight pints, yeah? Eight pints of blood on average in a human body. Right? How much sugar have you got in that blood? Five grams. Two grams. Who said that? Five Okay, we've got two grams over there. Any, any other guesses? How how much in, in in sort of fluid terms, if you've got eight pints of blood, how much how much sugar have you got in there? In, in grams or fluid ounces. Yeah, what does it translate to? How much sugar have you got in your in your body? On the go at any one point in time. Mm. <laughs> Teaspoon. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 less than one level teaspoon, it's two two grams. Yeah, which is like less than a level teaspoon of sugar. Now when the builder comes around and says, I'll have a cup of tea and four sugars, uh, that is causing problems. When you eat a slice of cake, you know, when you eat you know, a whole potato and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's flooding your body with a massive amount of sugar that is way over and above what should be in there. And uh, the way it gets it out is the pancreas, the organ, will flood you with insulin and when the insulin um, works, basically um, the insulin will uh, burn off the sugar. And so the problem is that if you're doing, if you're just eating a little bit of something and you get a little bit of sugar, it's just releasing a little bit of insulin, it's never going to be a problem. You're never going to have, you're never going to get into a diabetic situation. You're, unless unless you've got diabetes type 1, which is a different story, that's um, you know, all sorts of reasons why people do, go down that road. Um, but for, diabetes, for, the, for the type 2 diabetes, which builds up as you get older, uh, generally, you're not going to go down that route if, unless you're overworking the pancreas an awful lot. And so what we want to do is try and reduce the amount of insulin that you're producing you don't want to overproduce insulin, it gives you two problems. One, the cells become resistant to it. It's oh my god, there's so much insulin, I, I, you know, I, it just switches off, and now it can't burn the sugar off. So you become insulin resistant, you've got all this sugar floating around, and all this insulin floating around, and basically it turns into fat by the process. So insulin resistance is bad news. Um, 
So the body stops responding to insulin. Acid from sugar fermentation damages receptor sites. So you've got a build-up of acid as well from too much sugar in the body. Um, and um, yeah, it just the body just doesn't like sugar. Yeah, it needs a little bit, but it will get that little bit to keep the brain going and, and energy up to a certain extent. But you don't really need it for uh, the, the levels that people eat to. Um, yeah, so high levels of insulin floating around because it become insulin resistant causes the body to store fat. And you can get insulin resistance by too much stress. If you're stressed out, your adrenals here are pumping out cortisol, so you get a stressful situation. Um, in the old days, if we had a stressful situation, it's because a lion or a bear was running towards you, and you think, there's a bear, and you'd be legging it, and you'd burn off. You'd release the cortisol and the, and the, and the hormones, the adrenal hormones, and you'd actually be burning it off. You'd be running for the, for the woods, you know, or climbing up a tree to get away from the bear or the lion or the, the dog that was after you or whatever. Um, now, you're, you're in the office okay. and the boss walks in and gives you a bollock here. And you, you want to kick on a murder in, but you kind of like, don't because you want your job. But you kind of like, oh, this is going off and you haven't actually moved. And burn off all that. All, all, the adre all the adrenals have been going and producing all the hormones and cortisol and all the rest of it, but you haven't actually moved and burnt it off. So it's just floating around and then, and then it, it causes problems. Um, so um, uh, cortisol when it is released, it thinks a bear's going to come chasing after you, so it releases all this sugar from the liver. Um, and then, and then you've got all this sugar floating around, and you're not burning it off, and so it's pumping out a shed load of insulin. Um, the body's thinking, why am I getting all this insulin? Just because you're stressed out every day at work, and you're getting all this insulin coming in. The body doesn't know what to do with all this insulin and all this sugar, and, and, and it gives up. It goes into insulin resistance, and then you've got all this stuff floating around, and it converts into fat. So, stress is not good, and bad diet is not good, is what I'm saying, <laughs> in a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> so, that, that's more on that. <coughs> um, yeah, because it, it also leads to heart problems, too much stress, bad diet leads to heart disease, um, uh, and so on and so forth. It's, it causes problems in the, in the arteries. Um, it also leads to diabetes, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's dementia, and cancers. They're all now linked to, to stress and bad diet. Um, insulin resistance is also linked to irregular periods, polycystic ovaries, low periods, premenstrual syndrome, the immune system goes down, and memory concentration is affected by the cortisol, tightness and mood swings, digestive system. <coughs> Thyroid starts packing in, skin changes, and this thing makes the skin grow. When a patient walks in, the first thing they do is have a quick scan of the skin and the you know, face and neck and see if you've got any growths and things like that. And that tells you how much insulin resistance is going on very often. Um, any tags, any slight discolorations, you can see all of that going on there. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's bad news. <coughs> Um, the other thing is, when you're stressed out, you do tend to go for comfort eating, um, and you tend to go for the acidic, sweet things. So you know, stress is bad news. So how do we get around it? Um, we get, uh, this this is how to alkalize. Um, I'm going to explain the Gosh program in a moment. Stop dieting. Uh, what the, the problem? Uh, I don't know if you've read the stats on it, but if you go for um, intensive exercise, then it really doesn't have much effect for most people on your weight because you tend to eat a lot more because you're so hungry because you, you, you know you start kind of doing all this exercise. You you, know, you can just have a little bit of exercise, so it doesn't make you like so hungry you've got to eat a lot. Um, then you kind of reach a balance there. Exercise is really good, but it won't make you slim because you're going to eat more. 
Uh, not, no, not everybody falls into that category, but most people do. You know, now I do it. I go out and play football on Friday. I'm starving when I get home. I want to, you know, making juices and smoothies. And oh, I'm, so, I'm so hungry after playing football on Friday evening. Um, and that's what people do. So most people will not get slim by exercising. It just doesn't work. And I've read the research, and it's kind of like gone, gone through hundreds of people, and they don't get slim. <coughs> You build a bit of muscle, and you do do a lot of good in doing exercise, but you're not necessarily going to get slim. It's not the quickest way to get slim. You know, 80% of the getting slim is changing your diet, is affected by the diet. So stop, stop dieting as well, because um, it's like the lifestyle change comes in, and it's, that's it. It's kind of like, okay, this is what I'm going to do from now on, and you get slim, and you stay slim. When you do a diet, you're just kind of thinking, oh, you know what, I, you know, I can't wait to get off this diet and <laughs> eat some really nice food. Uh, what we want to do is create some really nice food and, um, uh, and make it really enjoyable. Um, the alkaline, you know, you're probably thinking, right, okay, if this is so good, if this is going to make me slim, if this is going to like, Make sure I don't get heart attack and diabetes and cancer and all those horrible things. Um, if I'm going to if I'm going to achieve all that, then surely John must be like mega rich and famous by now because this is like unbelievably too good to be true. Yeah. Somebody must have thought that. Right. Now here's the catch. What is acidic? I mean, the diet itself is dead simple. Look at a piece of food and you know whether it's acidic or alkaline. You just know because I'm going to tell you what's acidic and what's alkaline. And all you have to do is say, that's acidic, I'm going to eat that. This is alkaline, I'm going to eat that. And you can eat as much as you want, as long as it's alkaline. That is the end of the diet. Yeah? That, that is how you do it. If it's alkaline, you can eat it and you can eat as much as you want. So what is alkaline and what is acidic? And this is why I'm not, at the moment, mega rich in favours. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because I'm going to tell you what is acidic. Rice is acidic. Sugar is acidic. Yeah, rice is acidic. Yeah. Even brown rice. Even brown rice. Yeah, it's acidic. Um, wheat is acidic. All wheat is acidic. All caffeine. Is acidic. You know, chocolate, coffee, tea, it's all acidic. Raw chocolate is actually acidic. It's got a lot of great nutrients in there, but it is acidic. It will make you go more acidic. Uh, I do sell raw chocolate. On, on the, on, I don't sell a lot of it because I don't push it big time. It's got caffeine, a little bit of caffeine, it's got quite a lot of theobromine in it, very acidic substance. Now, it's got a lot of good stuff in there, but it will slightly stress the nervous system and make you slightly acidic. So, you know, even raw chocolate, but chocolate is acidic. Um, your eggs are acidic, fish is acidic. Um, fish is an interesting one because the fish oil is actually totally alkalizing, but the flesh is acidic. So we do sell fish oil capsules um, because they're totally alkalizing. Uh, eggs are acidic, so that means they're omelets and things like that. Um, potatoes uh, are, certainly new potatoes are acidic. Store potatoes, you have to be going, go, go easy on them. Uh, you've got some minerals in there that are quite good, but it's actually quite acidic, so you have to stay away from that. So that rules out wheat, bread, eggs, omelets. Um, mushrooms are slightly acidic. Um, what about dust? Fruit. <laughs> dust, uh, fruit. Most fruits produce too much acid. They're acidic. So the fruits that aren't acidic are coconut, um, lemons, limes, grapefruit, um, avocado is brilliant because it's totally alkaline. Um, so it's all the fruits that have got very little sugar in are alkalizing. 
Now, you can be clever, you can, you can get a melon, and if you take the really sweet, sugary bits out of the middle and eat more towards the end, towards the outer edge, towards the, the shell, um, that is, you get away with that. As long as you don't eat loads of it. Pardon? We eat meat is a city. Yeah. Yeah. Oranges, uh, oranges are acidic. That's right. Yeah. Lemons are, are lemons are fine. Yeah. Well, when you test the lemon with with my pH test strips, it comes out as massively acidic. But actually, it's an alkalizer on the body. So you know, um, with oranges, you can't have the oranges are acidic. Acidic outside and inside. And inside, inside and outside. Yeah. Cheese, milk, and cream are all the city. Yeah. Now, when you when you go to the website, uh, feel good alkaline health. There's a there's a there's a leaflet there. You just click. It's a free one. You just click on. You go. You click on it, and you can download the full set, of, the full list, and it gives you a score against every item of food. It says whether how acid it is and how alkaline it is. On the website, feelgoodalkalinehealth.co.uk. Feel good spelled PH. For, you know. yeah. um, so you can see the challenge. People sort of say, oh, now, now I can see why you're not totally rich and famous, because this is a challenge. To actually eat like this is a bit of a challenge to start with. Right? But when I look at what's in there, if you get a pint of milk and you think, goodness, first of all, it's not, it might not be organic, that's the first problem. Secondly, it might be pasteurised, that's the second major problem. So it completely trashes it and makes it go um, uh, acidic, very, very acidic. Thirdly, um, you don't know what's going on there, what hormones, what treatments that animal has. It's, it's like potentially, there's a certain amount of pus that's allowed into the milk, you know, legally, you know, from, from sores and things like that. So you compare that, and then you kind of like get my lovely almonds that are soaked over the light, and then you just blend them and put them through a sieve or a, a nut milk bag, and you drink that, and you think, no, oh, that's pretty damn tasty. Or you just do something simple, like get some shelled hemp seeds, put them into a blender, blend it with a bit of water, and you drink that, and you think, that tastes like the best milk I've ever tasted ever. It's just absolutely delicious and awesome. And there's none of that going off in there. It's not pasteurised. You've made it yourself. It's totally fresh. You've made it in two minutes. And it's absolutely delicious. And it, so what we try and do is get you to experience the deliciousness of all these amazing foods that you can have. And amazing crackers, you know. Um, and, it, and I'm going to explain a little bit why we're in this situation. Because all the foods that I've listed, the eggs, the, 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 the meat is just readily available every second of the day, uh, every cook street corner, in every shop. <coughs> all, all the way that the food industry has taken us is it's presenting you with just a set of acidic food because it's got shelf life. It's got amazing shelf life. It's got it's got um, the ability to ship it around, but it just it just you know it doesn't go off. Um, Designed by people who don't understand health, they're, just, they're, they're food technologists and financiers that organise what you eat. And what I'm trying to say to you is that, you know, it goes back to when I was living in Finborn, next the town next door is called Forest, and there are 10,000 people live in the town, ordinary people, ordinary Scottish people, and I went to, I'm, I'm, you know, I love death stats to see what people die from, you know. I, I've done loads of research on but you know, I should be an insurance salesman because, you know, I can more or less, the patient comes in, gives me their life history, and I think, okay, and I work out the end point quite quickly. And that's what insurance people do, they just work out the end point. Um, but obviously, they come to see me, so we, 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 we make the changes to change the end point. That's the whole point. <laughs> You know, I don't spell out the end point by the So, so you kind of like work out the end point. So, um, I went to see, I went into Forest, uh, into the registrar's office, both marriages and deaths, and I said, "How many people died in Forest last year?" And this 
fish is sort of dying. So, oh, okay, yeah. Um, 51 people died. Just check the register. Oh, right, okay then. What about the year before? So you tell me, how many people died the year before? Any guesses? <laughs> You're catching on, aren't you? No, come on, anybody else guess? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Right. Anybody else guess? One more guess. Two. 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 Fifty. Fifty. Okay. Forty-five. There you go. Okay, forty-five. Right. This was the reason. I said, how many people died the year before? <coughs> Looks down the list. Oh. Looks like that was um, a good year. I said, how many people died? 50. <laughs> but it, I, I'm telling you, life is like a treadmill. If, you know, we've, got, we've got three shops in the forest. There's the Tesco's, and then a couple of shops on the ice cream, everybody buys from there. Occasionally you make a bit of to visit in, in, in the next, right? But the food, tech, the food industry have got it all laid out. Well, if you go there, this is what you've got. They go and buy that stuff. They buy more or less the same stuff. Every, it's just like every time I watch a shop and try to go by, I look at them and think, I can't actually work out the end point. It's terrible, it really is. But it's like, you know, it's, it's like a treadmill. And it's no, it's no accident that the same number of people die every single year. And that's the way it's going to be. And you can either get on the treadmill, and the food and sort of present, and then you just fall off the end when it's your turn. Or you can think, well, no, hang on a bit. I'm actually going to change this, and I'm going to decide when I'm going to die. So the other part of alkalizing is that you get really good at getting in tune with your body, because you know um, I encourage people, and certainly one of my goals is that you know pharmaceuticals are not allowed into my life, and you know so far I've, I've avoided them, and um, uh, it's like no chemicals allowed in the house, you know that I can't ingest. So it's thin, little simple things like that that, that, that I enjoy, you know, sort of having, having those little goals. And, when, you know, what, it's, it's an opportunity for people to sort of check, turn things around and design their life the way they want to. And design it in such a way that you can decide when you're going to leave your body and leave this planet, this beautiful planet. On that note, let's do a test and then we'll have a break. Yeah, quick test before you start eating. So just get the first bit of paper. So you urinate towards the stage. And <laughs> <laughs> you're all going to go to the stage right? Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's get the um, chart back on. Okay, so. Uh, what we do is just get a little bit of saliva and put it on there and see what colour it goes. So, okay, that's 6.8, 6.1. Right, now, um, what, what, okay, everybody's got a score now, yeah? Now, I want you to eat something. Have you got yeah. something you can eat right now? Just a little bit. Let me get, let me get, let me get. Hang on, let me get you a quick uh, coat of it. This is a buckwheat alkalizing cracker, but you know what? It can be anything. It can be whatever you want. If you've got anything, you can have it. Hang on, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put my spoon in there. Um, you can crack it up. Okay, now, everybody eating something, then clear them out. So, just get a bit of saliva and clear them out. Get the food eaten and something done. So get it all clear. And then get a little bit of saliva and retest. Okay? Eight. Eight. Everybody got the results then? Everybody got the results? Yeah? Okay. So, pardon? It doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter what you eat. Everybody, more or less, got an eight. Yeah? We've got cake, you've got crackers. It doesn't matter what you eat. Right? 
as soon as anything goes into the body, into the mouth, sorry, it just floods it with alkaline. As long as you've got some alkaline reserves, so you just flood it because it tries to alkalize everything that goes in. And that's going to be sort of part of our the, the next part of our talk. Um, just just so you know, we've got we have got loads of stuff that will make you alkaline. Like the pH drops will make you alkaline. So you just put like ten drops, uh, eight to ten drops in a litre of water and drink. How big you are, you drink that amount of water. So if you're for every 50 pounds of body weight, you drink one litre of water and you put the alkaline drops in. Um, the other thing that, that we try and do is encourage you to have a good quality salt, up to six grams a day. So the Himalayan salts, we're well, going to talk about those next. And the, the other thing I'm going to talk about is how to build your blood. So if you get any damage in the body, how does the body repair itself? It's the blood that does it. And the quality of the blood, will, it will go to every part of the body. And if you've got high quality blood, it will go to that part of the body and it will start repairing it. So and the, the, the way that you generate blood is by drinking chlorophyll. And that's why green food is so good for you. Green juices are so good for you. So every morning I start with a juice. It's a green juice because that builds high quality blood. And that's why I stir in the wheat grass powder and sometimes I get fresh wheat grass and juice it and drink that. And that is like totally, <coughs> absolutely amazing. I also have um, chlorophyll, um, pure chlorophyll. And um, the, this I put into, I mix it with a with, with, um, uh, bottle. What I'll do, I'll, make, I'll show you how to make it now, so that you, you can have a, for anybody who wants to try it, you can come up and sort of have a little sample of, I brought some cups here for you. Um, I'm going to make you a little bit of green water, as I call it. So, just put a cap full of that in there, um, pH drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You only need eight, that's not a litre there. Um, and then normally I put a little bit of salt water in. I'm going to show you how to make the salt water. Um, and then mix that around. And uh, whoops. And that is the number one thing that I do to get alkaline and build high quality blood. Uh, every day, in addition, in addition to having a juice and reducing all, you know, as much as possible. Uh, the reason why I take the chlorophyll is literally because it, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it mimics blood. It's the same. It's almost the same, but it's got magnesium in the centre instead of iron. That gives it a different colour. But as soon as it hits the intestinal villi, the body is able to produce blood through the intestinal villi instantly. So if your if your blood count goes down, you start drinking chlorophyll, it comes up. And they used to use this in the First World War, apparently. They used to give the soldiers chlorophyll to drink. In general, blood, because of, you know, instead of having blood transfusions. So, that. Yeah, the, the only thing is, now, and I do juice spinach, and I do juice wheatgrass, and I juice every morning, but I can drink that all day long, and it's easy. So, you know, you can, you can take that everywhere you go, basically, and you can have it in the house, and it's dead easy to make sure you're getting green stuff inside you. So, I mean, we've got an alkalizing start pack which has got that in it, it's got that in it, it's got um, the test strips, and it's got, it's got like, rocks and salt in it. So, you put that on your food, and you make, you put the rocks into, into a jar, fill it with water, and drink one teaspoon of that a day as well. It's great alkalizer. So, it's called the alkalizing start pack. Um, but you can just start with one of those things, or you can just start juicing and start eating alkaline food. I should complete the list of what is alkaline food, but enjoy the break. Yeah. Can we give a polite ripple as a way of welcoming back the speaker?
1st of February, Saturday the 1st of February, we're doing a, a one day workshop from 10 till 5 at the Strathallan Hotel, which is on Henry Road. And uh, it's £20 to get in. And what we do is we take you through loads of recipes as well as explaining how kind the of body works as well as, as we go through it. So you get your breakfast and, and all, your, all your meals kind of like sorted out uh, in an entertaining way. So we'll, we'll make stuff, we'll do a little bit of yoga, and I'll show you how to do a little bit of um, trampolining so that you get, uh, well, when I say trampolining, rebounding and stuff like this. So there's, there's an action packed day of um, how to get super healthy. And that, that's, that's my interest uh, in how to get people well in the shortest amount of time possible. And the way you do it is by switching to, um, well, switching your lifestyle. Rather than trying to really keep your lifestyle intact with the whole set of drugs or needles or homeopathy and blah, 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 blah. And so you can carry on drinking the coffee and, and doing whatever it is that's actually building up the acid and causing the problems. So, and, you know, so we try to make it as entertaining as possible, action and Totally practical, so you learn loads of stuff. So that's, um, I'll pass that around. And if any, you know, take a leaf. If you don't want to leave, like, just don't take one. But if you do, if you do want to come kind of read about it and take a leaf. Oh, you know, you're coming yeah, So if you pass it on, because I'm not sure I've brought enough leaflets for everybody. But um, yeah. And then before I forget as well, we we do a health retreat. Where you come and live the life. We, we cook, we want to say cook, we prepare amazing food for the whole weekend. You arrive on Friday, leave on Sunday, and uh, it's a retreat. We've got um, far infrared saunas, we've got the hot tub, uh, it's right near the sea, so you can walk down to the, to the beach. It's about a mile away from the beach, but you can walk down to the beach. Um, we, we, we've got Two great chefs that will show you amazing recipes and they cook for you so you actually eat great food. And that is, the next one is 28th of February to 2nd of March, um, which is near the Salt and then the other one uh, beyond that is the 16th to the 18th of May. I'll leave this at the front here, so at the end, grab, grab a leaf about the, um, the health retreat if you want to come on that. And finally, We've got this brand new practitioner course, and I mention it here because we're going to run it in Birmingham, at an amazing new centre, it's state of the art. Um, and what's it called, Sammy? That, that you, where you work? Wishing Well, yeah, well she forgot. Well, she she yeah. completely forgot. But the Wishing Well, it's like state of the art, right in the, in the high street, in the middle of Bronze Grove. Um, and uh, it's, it's got a cafe, it's got therapy rooms, it's got a yoga studio. Go and go and have a cup of tea there. You, you'll get nice and get proper herbal tea. Um, so anyway, we're running a one-year practitioner course so that you can go out and build a practice and help people and all the rest of it. The course itself is going to be really good in the sense of it's going to be really, really good for you because you're going to kind of go totally alkaline as you go through as you learn more and more. And, um, and that's not to take anything away from tonight because you can go totally out by following this talk tonight. It's not about the science. But the, the practitioner course is one year, starting in March, and it's three retreats and seven um, weekends in, in the classroom where you know, we go through all the things so you actually know exactly how to take cases and how to deal with tricky situations and all the rest of it. So it's a one year course, starting in March, ending in December. So if anybody thinks, oh, I want to do that, if you're an existing practitioner, great, you can do it. But, you know, of any discipline, or if you just want to start from scratch and you want to become an alkaline health practitioner, you can do it now. So um, it's the only course in the world that's, you know, we, nobody else is doing an alkaline health practitioner. So, okay, let's go back to this then. GOSH program. G O S H. This is this, on the alkaline program. You just eat anything you want as long as it's on the alkaline list. So you've got to check the list. Oh yeah, I can eat that. And you soon recognise what is alkaline and what isn't. So instead of drinking tea and coffee, you switch to the longevity teas. So you're drinking yerba mate. You're drinking um, 
let all dandelion, peppermint, chamomile, all these great herbal teas, and um, things like the, the piece de resistance. If you never had a gynostoma, you, if I made you my gynostoma, you would be like thrown into orbit of ecstasy. It's so delicious. Gynostoma tea. It's like a longevity tea. It's a bit like the Everlanto, but it's got more depth and flavour. Um, so I think you get it from China, and it's just uh, one of those teas, the more you drink it, the more benefits you get from it. Unlike caffeine drinks, which the more you drink it, the more it wrecks your nervous system completely and trashes you. So, and it, as soon as you start on this programme, then it, things begin to change, as I'll describe in a moment. But G is for grit, gosh. So you've just got to remember gosh. So eat alcohol for it and then G is for greens. You've got to get the greens inside you. When you open the fridge door, it's good to see a sea of green. It's good to make the juices. One good juice would be <coughs> celery, cucumber, and some lemon or lime, and then plenty of salt. You just drink that in the morning. Fantastic alkalizing drink. It's totally refreshing. But you don't actually need that much. You know, a little shot like that is going to give you a lot of power for the day. It's, going to, it's a vitality drink. Um, it's going to make you an alkaline. So, and G is for greens. Um, the other way of doing it, as I've described, is to drink chlorophyll in water. Or right? we'll just have shots of it, like a whiskey shot. Instead of the whiskey, just have a shot of chlorophyll. And certainly, one of the great therapeutic benefits uh, well, if you get anything wrong with you, the first thing I do is have the chlorophyll. I start having shots of chlorophyll until whatever it is goes. Um, it's a really good thing for, for building immunity, calming inflammation down the aches and pains, and building blood so that it can go and repair the body. So G is for green. O is for, well, H is for H2O. G and H go together, actually. So you're drinking, every 50 pounds of body weight, you're drinking one litre of water. Now, one litre, uh, so if you're 10 stone, you need about 2.8 litres of water. So it's quite a lot of water. Um, but the body can take it, because what you're doing is mixing the chlorophyll with it, and the pH drops, so it's got a lot of minerals going into it. And the body can then take it. Um, the other thing that we do is uh, salt, so H2O and green, uh, with, with the pH drops in. S is for salt, so you need 6 grams a day, which is a teaspoon a day, and you just sprinkle this on your food. And this, this is um, Himalayan salt, which is it was created as an ancient sea, and it's pristine salt, it's got no, no dirt in it, no toxins. And we have it hand carved out of the mountains, so there's no diesel fumes getting into it. And then we bought this. This is like the high quality salt that, that you really want. It's like the problem with sea salt now is it's contaminated with the sea. Uh, um, you know, you've got, you've got a situation there to try and get the contaminants out. We, we can get this from the US, it's, it's pure, but it hasn't got any contaminants in it. then these crystal salts, salt rocks, <coughs> You put them into a jar, fill it with water, and after 24 hours, it's 24% it's, it's, it's salt solution, and it stays at that, and the crystals don't dissolve anymore after 24 hours. So you just keep topping it up until the crystals are more or less gone, and you put more crystals in. But it's got super power energy from this. You, it's, um, when you take one, I used to give, say to people, you need two teaspoons a day. People were saying, John, you know that solar? It's like, I can't take two teaspoons, I'm too energised. Okay, knock it down to one. So now I just say take one. It gives you so much energy, it's really amazing stuff. And it makes the water taste amazing. So the first, first litre of the day, I put one teaspoon in. So you need one teaspoon of Solway, ideally. And it makes the water taste delicious. You kind of drink it and you think, that was really nice. Really nice. It's totally energised, full of minerals of sodium which is good for you. Now if you have too much sodium it can push your blood pressure up but it only pushes your blood pressure up if you have too much. Now I recommend you have six grams which is a teaspoon of salt. When people on a junk food diet they're eating a lot more than six grams and that does cause problems. It's also a cheap salt and it's full of chemicals and it's, it's created in a way 
like sacks of salt, created by heating it to ridiculously high temperatures to purify, and then they put chemicals in as well. So it's only it's like three percent chemicals, or you know, and you did, don't want to be putting ordinary salt in. You want you want high quality natural salt from the sea. Originally, Himalayan salt is from the sea. So that's G O S H. Then you can do little simple tricks because the big alkalizers are sodium from salt, potassium that's in the drops, um, calcium which you don't want to put in your body because um, and I'll cover this on the one day thing. I've not enough time to go into. If you start putting calcium, any supplements, any calcium supplements into your body, they will. <coughs> Uh, add to the arthritic problems that you've got. They will clog up every single part of your body from your brain all the way down. So I never put any calcium in. The only calcium that I get is from natural food. <clears throat> so I never get any calcium that's come from anything other than from food. But that's it. End of story. It's calcium it's calcium carbonate, that's the worst thing you can do put that in your body. Um, homeopathically, it's fine. And that's the one big mistake that he makes. And that's why I never sell four songs. Because of the calcification problems. So that's the one thing that he's got totally wrong. Just about everything else is spot on. But that's the one thing he's made a big mistake. So you need to stop putting the calcium in the body. Because it will soak you up. It's all, you, know, you know when you um, are cremated. What's left at the end of it? Calcium it is indestructible. The only way the body can absorb it is in the natural food. So if you, as soon as you start putting calcium in the body that isn't from food, it leads to a massive shed load of problems. And I'll be covering that in, in a huge amount of detail on the, uh, on the course. Because we, we then got a whole regime of people who are classified to get the calcium out um, that's, that's got into the body. So um, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, strongly recommend that you don't go near the four songs yeah, for that reason. Um, so, gosh, so what? But an easy win is just to get a magnesium screen and spray it on your the skin. Um, it's absorbed straight into the bloodstream. Um, it's uh, magnesium uh, chloride. Spray it on, goes straight in. So if you have a shower. Yeah, I do. I do a little workout. Have a shower. Spray it on. And it's not actually an oil, it's like water really, so it just soaks into the skin and that's a problem. And then, every once a week or whatever, I'm soaking magnesium flakes to turn to the alkaline. So it's getting these magnesium, uh, get, getting all these um, like, um, alkalizing minerals into the body. Now what, what then happens when you become an alkaline? It, it, it allows other minerals to get into the body. So, Iodine, it doesn't matter how much iodine you drink, and I wouldn't recommend drinking it, I just put it on the skin because it can, it can go in a little bit too quickly. I get a lot of patients say, I took this iodine drops and uh, it went in too quickly. That's, iodine's great, and there's two different forms there's, there's the um, normal iodine and there's the um, uh, KC iodine, the heavy KC chemical, the mason iodine, which is far superior to normal iodine. Um, but it, either way, whether you're using the Lugol's iodine, which is the normal iodine, or, or the KC, I just put it on the ovaries around here and let it soak in. Um, but the, the, the way, the, 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 when you become alkaline, um, the, the, the whole system has to be alkaline to properly absorb iodine from the, from the food that you eat. Um, because iodine is a very heavy mineral and it takes a lot to process it into the body. Um, and in order to do that, it needs to be as alkaline as possible, and it actually um, takes it and holds it and processes it properly into the body. So um, yeah, you need iodine for the thyroid, but you also need it for the uh, ovaries as well, and reproductive organs. Now, um, so GOSH is you know, G O S H. So Greens, salt, water. What's the O for? Alright. It's a good one actually. I'm going to add that in. Add, add something else actually, but let's, oxygen is really essential. 
So yeah, oxygen is essential. But what is O? O is for oil, and um, the, the 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 problem we've got is that we we've, we've moved from an environment where omega three was available even from animals, but it's no longer available from animals because they just don't eat the right stuff. So they're not they, you're not you don't get any omega three from animals. You get it from fish still. They still produce it. But you need to get omega-3 into the body uh, in order to properly, fully alkalize. But it's got another side effect, um, a benefit, not a side effect, a benefit, which is that it gives you energy. So when you have oil and it's omega-3, you get energy. So you can either have fish oil, and <coughs> um, with, with regard to fish oil, it's really difficult to get the oil out of the fish. Very, very difficult. And most, well, every company, bar two, use solvents to do that. They use solvents to get the oil out of the fish. You do not want those solvents in your body. They are carcinogenic. So I found two companies that can get fish oil out using supercritical extraction. They don't use any solvents. And, you know, so only have fish oil that supercritical extraction is my recommendation. Um, but... The other way you can get omega 3 is from hemp oil and flax oil, but it's really, 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 really beneficial for you, but unless it's gone slightly off, then it's not good at all. It's, it's bad, you know. So I've managed to find a couple of companies that put the start and end date on. So when you buy hemp oil or, or flax oil, which is omega 3, check it's got the start and end date on because you don't want to put all the oil in your body. That is bad news. So you want fresh oil, start and end date, and if they don't put the start and end date on, <coughs> some financier thinking we want more shelf life, more profit, and they're doing a big disservice and a big, you know, a lot of harm by not knowing how old that oil is. So, like the flax oil I've got from, from America, well, from Canada, is, is organic, it's got the start and end date on it, and the same with the hemp oil. And it's fresh. Now, the other benefit, that side effect benefit from oil, apart from giving you energy, is that when you switch to less carbs and more oil, you go into euphoria. And the reason is, or part of the reason, is that the carbs, if you use them for fuel, they leave shed loads of what, um, what I can only call as exhaust fumes inside the body. And if you've got a shed load of exhaust fumes, you're going to feel pretty damn awful, <coughs> burning calms. So you're going to feel a bit like, great, I've got this energy, and then you've got all the debris to deal with. <coughs> when you've got fresh oil and you're burning now, you actually go into euphoria and there's no debris. It burns all the oil, and the body will burn all the oil up, and there's no debris, and you go into euphoria. So, you know, it's, it's a good deal. Yeah, so the oil is very important, it's very alkalizing. Omega 3. You can all, on, on our website, when you download the list of foods, it's got every oil and how good it is. When you cook, you can cook on it, you don't have to go totally raw. Like, when you cook, you cook with oil that can withstand heat. So, which oil is that? Coconut, coconut oil. Yeah. And again, coconut oil is extracted. How do they extract coconut oil from a coconut? They use a solvent, pardon? Squeeze it. Squeeze it, yes. They, they actually do it with a chemical called hexane, which is toxic. So I've been through all the coconut oils and I found one company that doesn't do with hexane. It's Nutiva. Um, and they, they've got a big sign saying no hexane coconut oil. And so when you buy your coconut oil, check with the manufacturer. Has it got hexane in it? It's got hexane in it. Don't buy it, is my recommendation. You can be poisoning it. Um, so if you get a clean coconut oil with no hexane, uh, extracted naturally with no solvents, and then you cook with that, it can withstand high temperatures. So if you want to make a nice buckwheat pancake with squeezy lemon on it, uh, easy peasy squeezy lemon, it's really great. It's, um, you know, buckwheat pancakes. Buckwheat is good. So, we've got a situation. People are horrified at the thought of rice 
Now, what do you mean? You can't eat rice. It's, it's a city. It is a city. And the reason why it's a city is because we, it's, we it's been changed over the last few, couple of thousand years. Um, the, the, and it's the same with wheat. It's been changed over the last couple of thousand years. So when you eat the durum wheat, it's, it's, it's a modern thing. And our bodies are ancient. We're billions of years old. Uh, in my experience, you know, the working with people, and it doesn't like change. It doesn't like this new wheat that's only been around for 2,000 years. Spelt is okay. Spelt, great. Spelt is fine. As is Kamut flour, wheat, K A N U T. Because it's ancient, and you can have your spelt, you know, pancake or whatever you want to do, or spelt cracker. Exactly, that's the one to go for. Yeah. Old variety wild rice. If you see a lettuce now, I mean, a lettuce is actually alkalizing, but, it, but do you know what a real lettuce looks like? The original lettuce that, that, that came you know, from like 300 years ago. Like man's lettuce, really tiny. Tiny! And do you know what it's got in it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, okay. My mother came from Poland. And they lived in the country, and they used to give her lettuce, fresh, you know, pink lettuce, wild lettuce, to get her to sleep at night. Okay. <laughs> so it was great. Yeah, maybe it's true on the root of the lettuce. Exactly, yeah. That's all about the romaine Yeah, but the original, the, the old lettuce is packed full of, like, amazing stuff, and it's tiny. Yeah, lettuce is alkalizing, you can eat, eat that, no problem. All, all your vegetables are alkalizing. Apart from a few, a few that are on the not, not you know, sort of um, to be watched list. What one is mushrooms, one is potatoes, another one is potatoes. You can eat sweet potatoes; they're jam packed full of amazing stuff. Always go for organic. Um, don't take any risk with non-organic, like non-organic food. Uh, what you find is that as you go more and more alkaline, you actually eat a lot less. You're kind of making a few smoothies and things like that, and they're packed full of nutrients and stuff. But there is the artichoke, I suppose. Well, Jerusalem artichoke would be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem. Um, any other questions about which food is alkaline? What, honey? Honey is acidic. Yeah. It's, it's too sweet. You know, um, you, you, want to, you want to try. The food on really sick people, like the diabetic, give them loads of honey and see what happens to them. You give them a load of green juice and they'll be fine. Give them a load of honey and they'll be gone. They'll be gone you know? Yeah. Uh, butter, ghee, fried. Yeah, uh, it's acidic. And it's also got high risk because the higher you go up the food chain towards animals, the more risk you take. Because they, uh, they're full of, fish are full of mercury. Animals are full of antibiotics. And blah, 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 blah. So if you're going to eat meat, go for grass-fed organic meat at all times. And um, uh, what was the question again? Oh, gear and butter. Gear and butter, yeah. And if you go to the food chain, the more risk you take. Gear and butter come from animals and see you've got a lot of risk factors. So I would, I would stay away from you. Use, use um, coconut manure as a spread on the cracker. Use coconut oil as a spread. Use any of the oils like olive oil, organic cold pressed olive oil is great. Um, all the oils are great if they're cold pressed organic. Fantastic. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, that would look great. Absolutely brilliant. Are the seaweeds alkalizing? Seaweeds aren't got a problem with. But with chlorella and um, <coughs> spirulina, uh, there's some a big debate going on. Because uh, Dr. Young says that he's seen the, the problems with taking spirulina and chlorella. He said you're better off taking chlorophyll. It's packed full of chlorophyll. He, he says you're better off taking it from the land. So you, you, you're always making the chlorophyll using alfalfa or biogas made on land, grown on land, <coughs> grown in murky waters, you know, which is where it's kind of originated from. So never be cautious. And there's, there's just a, a big school of thought, and I say, well, you know what, I don't want to take that risk. 
Uh, some people do say they benefit. They say, oh, I do so well on it. I think, okay. But then I've got other people saying, no, you know what? I didn't do well on that at all. I felt really bad. But I haven't said that anybody say they feel bad on pure chlorophyll from load. So I think certain people cannot digest it or something. There's something going off there. You know, for some people. And some people get to do well on that. <laughs> yes, because it is a, it's just a bit of a risk. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to Dr. Young about that side of vinegar because some people say to me, I took that and it kind of healed this and it healed that and it was amazing. And I, can't, I don't want to deny that, I can't deny it, that's what, they, that's what happened. Um, but Dr. Young said, yeah, it helps. for some people that's short term benefit, but if you keep taking that, you become a subject. You need to be careful. It, it's not necessarily alkalizing. Vinegar is the most acidic thing out there. So it's the worst, the most acidic food that you can put in your body. Um, but it's got nutrients and stuff going in there that some people benefit from in the short term. But I would be wary to constantly have it. It's almost like a medicine for short term use to, to solve a particular problem and then come off it. I wouldn't use it long term. On all the time. I just use it as, you know, if you've got a specific need for it. Yeah? I mean, I'm Polish French, which, I'm, I'm, I'm Polish French as well, and uh, you, you've got all the sauerkrauts, haven't you? And I, I you know, the, um, the gherkins, the yeah. gherkins, I mean, I, I, I eat that kind of gherkins, you know. And obviously, I like the vinegar as well. Yeah, um, it, it will, 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 Right, let, let's press on then. Um, so, stop dieting, eat them good often, ensure you have breakfast, make sure it's a nice smoothie and juice and some good stuff, eat alkaline food, avoid acidic food, drink plenty of alkaline beverages, and take time to eat. It takes 20 minutes for the signal to get to the brain to say, I am full. So, if you are starving and you start eating, you eat really, even if you're starving, you really slowly and take longer than 20 minutes because that's how long it takes for the signal to get through. So you, in that 20 minutes, if you, if you can eat and eat and eat and you'll never feel full, the signal doesn't click in for 20 minutes. So take your time when eating. Also, it's good better for the digestion as well. Um, so stop dieting. Dieting puts you in survival mode. You hold on to the weight. You, you want to eat lots, it slows down your metabolism. As soon as you start dieting, you think, oh, we've not been in starvation, it slows down your metabolism so you don't lose any weight, particularly. Uh, the diet plans are very acidic. I went to every diet plan, Rosemary Connolly, and all the, you know, these people who do diet plans are so toxic. They've got massive shelf life, they're really toxic. You want fresh food, not, not this diet, not this shelf life stuff. Um, uh, you feel weak after a while, you, know, right? you lose water, muscle, and a bit of fat, and then you go straight back on as soon as you come off the diet. Um, so you want to eat little and often, but you do actually need breaks. And some people, um, and it, it's not so much the British, a friend of mine is a teacher, and he teaches in German schools, and he teaches American soldiers and British soldiers. And the Brits come in and they sit in over here, and the Americans come in and they sit there, and he starts the lecture, and the Brits are very well behaved, they will not eat. They walk in, and they will not eat. But then they'll go out and have, you know, two hours later they'll go out and have a, a cup of tea and a biscuit or whatever. The Americans come in and they graze it all the time. They just graze. So it's, it's unbelievable, it's like they instilled in their culture now. They just, you know, they get a bag of crisps out, they get some sweets out, they get a biscuit, but they never actually stop eating. And that gives your pancreas a problem because he actually does need to stop. You need to stop for like a couple of hours or an hour, and then overnight you need to stop, you know, and uh, give yourself a little bit of a break so that your pancreas can get a little bit of a break. Um, uh, blood sugar is staying. No family, don't put any. You know, sugary things in, so that's the honey and all the rest of it. What you can do um, is make a nice elixir with, you know, just plain water, lemon juice, and put a, scrub, a little bit of stevia into it. Stevia is fantastic. It's been around for thousands of years. 
It's no, not, not dry cedric at all. And we've got fresh steam in it. We press uh, on, on the table over there. We've got butterscotch uh, flavour. We've got vanilla flavour. All natural. And um, plain flavour. And you just like a little, one drop of that in a, in a bottle of water. Or two drops. You, you produce delicious lemonade. Dead simple. Water, lemon, a couple of drops of that fresh steam here. And you drink that and it's like, oh my god, the best lemonade you've ever had. Um, what about the no, xylitol gets a really bad press these days, so it, 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 it causes a shed of problems, um, digestive problems for a lot of people. So I did experiment with it for a while, but more and more stuff is coming at me like, oh, this is not good, not good at all. So, is it in that cake? It's probably better than sugar, but yeah, we'll give you some feedback. Yeah. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's going to be better than sugar, but it's. Oh, I looked at the research and it was really, really positive for all your. I know, honestly. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. And but that, uh, it's not that. It's, exactly it's too uh, much bad stuff coming out of it, uh, the research there. I'm, I'm, Does it really sugar pie? No, it's got all of that. Better, it's better than sugar in that sense. But it's not good. It's like this fermented stuff that is actually going to give you all sorts of problems mm -hmm. in, in the long term usage of it. So, yeah. How about, how about the fasting, you know, just having a couple of days where you just. You fasting, know. fantastic. Okay, Absolutely. Give yourself brilliant. a rest. Yeah, give yourself a rest. <coughs> um, when I say fasting, normally people will fast for one or two days a week where you try and lock it down from the 2,000 average calories to 500. So you're still eating a little bit to keep you going, still drinking water, but you're actually locking right back. And that is really good because it kicks in the growth hormones, which is what we want. We want youth and vitality, and that's what you're going to get by fasting. So absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you can do one or two days on that, brilliant. Um, some people just fast, eat very little during the day, and a bit more in the evening. So you can kind of do it all sorts of ways, but give, give your body a bit of a fast. Is really good. Um, I play football on Friday, so Friday is always fasting day for me. I don't eat anything virtually at all. I'll have a juice, water, a little bit of this, a little bit of salad. Because if I eat anything, I actually can't play proper football at six o'clock when we kick off. I can feel the food slowing me down. So if I don't eat anything, I can just run and run and run and run. And I'll never get tired for the whole hour that we play. If I eat anything, bang, I can feel it, my energy dips. So it's actually something's kicking in, like growth hormones. Um, yeah, more, more energy, eat little off of more energy, mood swings reduce. The worst thing you can do is um, uh, get a, have a coffee, um, and then that kicks in the cortisol, and you go into like a stress response, and, um, and then you get really ratty. So you don't want to get ratty, you want to be really nice people all the time. And, uh, this, you know, so eating a little bit of really amazing alcohol food just keeps you, so especially if you're taking your oil and you're going into euphoria, you are the nicest person we could ever meet. You, you're, like, you know, you're very pleasant and you're genuinely happy and, and, and want to be with around people, but they want to be around with you. Um, so, yeah, eat every three hours, it reduces the cortisol levels by 17% of the stress level. Grabbing a coffee will not work. Miss breakfast and the body starts attacking your muscles straight away. Allow 10 to 15 minutes for breakfast. Make sure you get a bit of breakfast. <coughs> um, avoid processed food, alcohol, tea, coffee, diet drinks, wheat, dairy, meat, mushroom, vinegar, etc. Eat vegetables, salad, kaloo, spell, buckwheat, quinoa, villa. These are ancient. They're not going to, the body's going to love that. They never, never change, never have to change. Kidmore, Miller, Amara, uh, certain fruits which we talked about, uh, nuts, seeds, sprouts, lunch juices, raw, dehydrated vegetable foods. Great, fantastic. <clears throat> There's some recipes and all sorts on the website. Um, so, we've got a program, one litre for 40 pounds of body weight. That's for more hardcore. Start with one litre for 50 pounds of body weight. Drink teas such as dandelion, canola, peppermint, dental, the piece de resistance, which is gyno, stem, and yoga mate. Um, drink almond milk instead of dairy, or just make up some hemp milk from, from the hemp seeds. 
blood will not get to eyes and knees. So that's why it's important to spread the magnesium oil all over your knees, to remineralize the knees. But also, it's important that you then make an eye wash from, the, from these, so to remineralize the eyes, because it's the minerals that will then go into the cataracts and start the process of making sure that it get, gets rid of all the blepharitis and conjunctivitis and all that. You don't need antibiotics and all that when you've got this salt water. So every day, you make up a solution I use an empty bottle like that. I use one lot of the solo and I use 20 lots of water and then I use that as a gargle. So that means it's a 1% salt solution which is the same as the sweat. If you taste the sweat that comes out of you, it's 1%. That is 1%. If you taste the tears that come out of your eyes, they're 1% salt solution. So when you make up a one, when you use one, one lot of the solo, you mix with 20 lots of water, it makes up a 1% salt solution, and then you put that in your eyes, and you open your eyes, and you can't actually feel it. So it's just like, te- when, when you've got tears streaming, you can't feel tears like inside your eye. You can't feel anything. You just put it in there, and it cleans the eye, and remineralizes it. So I do that every day, and I use it as a mouthwash as well. So to, re- to remineralize the teeth, you need to use the mouthwash, um, and brush with, we've got ionic toothbrushes there, and neem re analyze it's called, so it re mineralizes your teeth. So you no longer have to sort of go and have like massive fillings done with that kind of thing, because you're constantly re mineralizing it. On the day, I'm going to show you how to re mineralize your teeth properly. So come, do come along to that. Um, any questions before we kind of finish? Because I think, yeah. Yeah, crude oil is good. Yeah, very alkalizing. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure it's super critically extracted and then we use solvent. So, yeah, that's the thing to watch out for. Write to the manufacturer or read the label. You know, find out. Any other questions? Yeah. I did bring a whole load more material just in case we ran out of stuff, but. Uh, I don't want to launch into a new subject, so... Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Where did you get those glasses? Um, you know what? Um, you can get them from the internet really cheap. You know, for stock of two pounds on them. But, but I found that the, this, this, this guy makes these. And he, he spent his whole life just making these and nothing else. So I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to buy them off here and put them on my website. If you type pinhole glass on Amazon, you get like a hundred different varieties. But I, I'm going to back this bloke who, who sort of, he took me through the sites of why his holes are this big and where the position is. And he said, if you don't do it quite like this, John, this will happen, that will happen. And I, so I bought these. And also, I, I think they're quite astounding. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, these, these are these top of the range ones. These are about. But he sells something about 15. And, um, and, but you can, I've seen them on Amazon for two quid. Yeah, $1.99. But he says that the holes are in the wrong place. So, what's so his, what's his name? Uh, I, can't remember, I can't remember his name. Because um, he calls it, he calls it, I can't remember his name, but he, could, he, he, he basically works opposite me when I do the Quest show. So I see him every year and we we'll chat about things. What's the difference between this £15 one? Oh, the, the, these have got metal. The £15 one is exactly the same um, lens. It's not lens, it's just holes. Um, but it's all plastic. So it's bigger and slightly. Yeah, it depends on your style, you know, what you prefer. But these are, well, you know, I just like these. Yeah, yeah, I'll put both on. <coughs> if you give me about a week, I'll put it on the website. And then, you know, you just order them, and you know you're getting this guy's top notch holes. You, you, you get a full instruction book for me. Okay. Yeah, so.